Good morning everyone and welcome to Storytime. Uh, my name is Alice and I am the project manager for children and young people at Writing on the Wall. And we've got a special treat for you this morning because you are going to be hearing a few chapters from Patrick Graham's brand new book, The Three Little Jamaicans. And this book is all about sibling rivalry. It's all about adventure. It's all about spookiness and really importantly about belonging. Now in this story Patrick speaks about seeing pictures of England and wanting to go. So maybe after you've listened to the chapters you might like to write your own story about a place that you would like to go to. Maybe you've seen a picture and you think that looks amazing I want to go there. Now, once you've finished listening to the chapters, I'm sure you're going to want to listen to the rest of the story. So I'll make sure to put a link to where you can get the full book of Three Little Jamaicans. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Hello, my name's Patrick Graham and I'm going to read a couple of chapters from my book, which is called The Three Little Jamaicans English Adventure. Here's the synopsis. While I was in England with my nine-year-old twin sisters, Blossom and Winston, we go on an adventure while our father is working. My name is Lenky. I'm seven years old and I dream of going home to Linston, Jamaica. But first, I must escape from pirates. Here's chapter one, which is called The Lapping Tree Frog and the Guy. I've seen pictures in magazines of England. It always kind of look sunny and hot with people laughing, people joking, people grinning and big grins, just like the crocodile that would peep at me in the pool at the bottom of Uncle Baz's garden. Well, I called it Uncle Baz's garden, but it was really the bush because we lived in the countryside in Jamaica, away from all the foolishness of the towns. Well, that's what I Uncle Baz would say. I like going into town, into the big market and hearing all the fuss that people would make over plantains or yams, sweet potatoes, green bananas, and even breadfruits. England was not like in the magazines though. There was no sun and it was not hot, but it was cold like the water in Dunge River Falls. I'd been to Dunge River once when Pops came home to Jamaica from the first time he started to work away in England. It was a long time ago. And all I remember is that the water was very cold at the bottom of the waterfall. He never did take us back there the other times he went away, only the first time he came back. I've always wondered why, but I've not asked him because I know what he would say. Why keep out of big people's things? I never know what big people's things were, and I just knew not to ask. But I didn't care anymore, as this time Pops took us all to England with him. Pops even said that we may be able to stay long enough to see Christmas. I hear that it snows in England on Christmas. I know it'll be cold and I think I'd like to be a Jama Jamaican in the warmer Christmas and see the snow in England on the TV or just like in the storybooks used to bring home with them. We never did see Christmas though and we all had to leave because Pops was moved to another part of England to work and until he got a bigger house we'd have to go back to Jamaica and stay with Uncle Baz. We always stayed with Uncle Baz since Mama died. Uncle Baz only lived about 10 minutes away from our house. I was glad to go back to Jamaica because it was cold in England. The two weeks we were there went so fast, but I was happy because I did not have to go to school. And not like I didn't like school, but I was excited because in my school, they taught us lots of things about England. And I could not wait to go there. But once there, it was too cold because it was the start of winter. I think I knew more about England than anywhere else. And although I was glad to come home, I think I was more glad that I left. Not because it was too cold, but due to some trouble that happened when we found a guy sitting outside our neighbour's house. In Jamaica, I live in Linstead with my older sisters, Blossom and Winsome. They're twins. They don't look alike, but they are both the same at being mean to me and always treat me bad. Well, not all the time, but a lot. What I don't like is that they always box me about the head and call me names. Pops always says that I make it up. That's because they always pretend to be good when he's about. To get away from them, I'd always walk in the bush when Pops was not about and sit watching the animals and birds. 
And that's when I wasn't climbing up trees or chasing after the laughing tree frog. I never heard them laugh, but I thought if I caught one, maybe it would laugh for me. So I would chase them, but mostly ended up falling over a fallen tree trunk. I was not able to see the frog as it hid in all the colours of the plants. I love country, but I don't like England. It was so cold it made my lips freeze and fall apart. I licked them to keep them warm, but it hurt and made little cuts all over them. Pop said I would get used to it. Thing is, I knew he was just saying that to make me happy, because no one could ever get used to that cold, not even Pops, who'd been to England many times. Blossom says that she remembers a time when Mum and Pops had said they were going to live in England one day. But now Pops said he's just making money so he can build an extra room on our house. I'm glad he does not want to live there. It's always too cold, and I think Pops knows that. The trouble started in England when this girl who lived in the street that we stayed in, and not just any girl, but Mary Thompson, who ruled the streets and wanted to thump down Blossom and Winsome. This was all because of a guy outside our neighbours. He sat there alone for the whole day until Blossom decided that she had an idea about this guy. I ended up having to look after him on my own, but got scared and hid him in an old house down a back alley. So my sisters, I told my sister that I was in a shop when the guy went missing. They didn't believe me and made me tell them where the guy was. So me, Blossom and Winston set off to find a guy. At first I took them to two or three old houses, but they knew that he was not in there, as they had bricks in where the windows should be, a high fence around them. And there was a big dog and a man that walked up and down to make sure nobody took the tools when the workman had gone home. There's no way I could have hit the guy in there, they kept saying. I had to show them the real MTO so they would not box me anymore. Well, they never beat me bad, but the English boys laughed at me in the streets when they saw my sisters boxing me, and I never liked that. Chapter two is called The Rotting House. We were at the top of the alleyway where the empty house was. It was not far, but we had to go down the other end, which was dark, even though it was daytime, because the houses were so close it made shadows all along the alleyway. Well, which house is it? Blossom said, grabbing me by the arm. Winston pushed me forward. Well, Nenki, which house is it? Is your death? I pointed, my hand shaking, as I did not want to go back into that old house with its rotten walls and holes in the floor. But there was no turning back as Blossom and Winston pushed me forward. We walked slowly towards the house, stepping over old shoes, broken television sets, broken bottles, loads of rubbish bins, and mountains and mountains of dog food. It was that much dog poop, I think someone was throwing it over the walls because I've never seen so much before. Not even Uncle Baz's cow made that much mess, and cows can make some mess. You had to always check you never stood in any, as Uncle Baz would go crazy and get vexed if you came into the house with cow poo on your feet. I actually stood in some once, and my shoe came off as I stepped out of it. <laughs> we arrived at the house, and I pointed through the gaps in the fence to a small window that had all the glass broken away and said, that's where I got in. You have to pull back the wood on the fence and get through into the back of the house. Blossom and Winston looked around, making sure no one was watching, and pushing me out the way, they headed towards the wood and pulled it back and disappeared into the backyard. I wished I was running in the bush, chasing lizards and laughing tree frogs, I thought, in my head, because I was scared of what would happen next. The house was very old and I cannot imagine that anyone ever lived there. And if they did, I wonder what they were like. In the bush, there was an old shack where I used to play, and pretend to be a pirate, or that I'd been attacked by pirates and they'd stolen my treasure. It's funny because in my games, I always had my treasure stolen. I like it this way, and I'd make the pirates walk the plank when I caught them. They always hid the treasure and would never tell where. People in Linstead said the shack used to be a hideout for slaves who escaped, and sometimes I used to pretend I was a slave and was hiding from the dogs and the masters with guns and whips. My pops would say that it was not nice to pretend to be a slave, but I didn't really know what a slave was. My pops would just tell me that I should find other games to play, and that to be a slave was not nice as they were all taken away from the families in different parts of Africa and made to work in the heat of the day with very little food, very little rest or water. Pops also said that the slaves who escaped were very brave and sometimes they helped other slaves escape. 
Pops later did tell me a lot about slaves and where they came from because he knows lots about the things from the past. It's his job. I stood there and I thought, I'm not staying out here on my own. So I quickly followed him through the woods as it slammed up with a bang behind me. Blossom and Winsome had reached the window where you could get into the house and I ran up to them as I was scared after staying outside by myself, even though it was not more than half a minute. Blossom had that look on her face and I knew what was coming next as she boxed me on the head. Why you have to bang the wood like that? Blossom said. Why you have to vex me so? She said, looking at me and waiting for my answer. Sorry, I said. You will be now. Just move on and shut up. You cause enough trouble already, said Winston with a grin on her face. Winston enjoyed Blossom telling me off. And as always, I had to say something as well. Winsome always took sides with Blossom. They moved close to the window and looking through into the old house. I came up close trying to see what they were looking at, but I could not see as the window was small and not big enough for all three of us to bump our heads in at the same time. I tried again to see, but they kept nudging me out the way. Let me see, I said. Blossom whispered, shut your mouth, Lanky, and be quiet or someone may hear us. There's no one about, so I don't think anyone could have heard us. It was so quiet, I decided to think of the noises in the bush, birds singing little songs while a yellow snake moved through the fern trees, hoping to catch himself a lapping tree frog, a cuckoo, a parrot, or even a woodpecker. Maybe the lapping tree frog always got away and would laugh at the yellow snake because he could never catch her. The woodpecker was always busy burying nuts in the trees, and I would sit watching on the top of the old shack as its red head hammered away at a tree trunk. Look, said Winston, over there. Blossom pushed her head far into the window. So far, I thought she would fall right into that rotten hole house and through one of the big holes in the floor. Blossom quickly pulled her head out the broken window, her eyes wide open, and said, I think I can see a leg, but I'm not sure. I wanted to run away, but I could not move my legs, even though I, thought I told them to run. I was so frightened. Just like the time I saw the crocodile at, at the bottom of Uncle Baz's garden out of the pool and was unable to move. Lucky for me that day, it was early morning and Uncle Baz always said that until the crocodile was warmed up in the sun, it would just lie still and it was safe to go near it. But the thing is, I did not know that at the time. This was different as I could not see the danger, only the look on Blossom's face and the sound of fear in her voice but I was not sure if there was even any danger at all, and maybe I was just imagining danger. By now, Winston was pushing her head through the window, and I could just about hear her say, I can't see anything. Are you sure you saw her leg blossom? Hearing this, I did not feel so frightened, and my legs moved. Only a little, but they did move. I started to run in my mind. As I was running in my mind, I stopped and was wondering how far shall I run and where I was running to. I never had the answer, so started running in my mind again. I moved closer to Blossom and asked, what it is you saw? Blossom looked at me and said, nothing, even though her mouth moved, but no sound came from me. I just stood there looking at her face. Suddenly I felt a slap. Lenky, are you deaf? We are talk to you. And you keep saying, let me see, let me see. As she boxed me again. Hey, stop it, no man, I said as I moved away. Blossom went back to the window and bounced Winsome out the way. I'm getting in, said Blossom. And before I knew what had happened, Blossom and Winsome had climbed in the broken window and were standing looking out at me from the shadowy room. The room had thin beams of light from what must have been lots of holes in the roof and the floor above, which broke up the dark patches of shadow, making it just about light enough for us to see. Chapter three is called The Headless Guy. Are you gonna stay out there? Said Winston. Yes, I said. Me? No, no, me need no. I don't want to stay on my own. Just like before when I wanted to run, my legs would not move as I tried to follow them in the window and I just stood there looking after both of them. Please yourself, fool boy, said Blossom. We will look without you. Suddenly I could smell Uncle Baz's jerk chicken, which he always cooked inside an old oil drum cut in two. I could almost taste it when I felt my legs move and suddenly I was climbing in the window. The smell of jerk chicken disappeared 
like I'd now smell the stink. That's all I could call it because the house smelled so bad I wanted to be sick. It was strange because when I was in there earlier, I didn't remember any smell at all. I bumped into Winsome. Watch yourself, she said. You nearly knocked me down that hole. I looked into the hole and I could see shapes, but I could not say what they were because it was so dark down there. The light from the window and through the holes in the floor above was not much and it made little shadows all over the place that looked as if someone was walking behind you. So I kept turning around thinking someone was really behind me. What you turning around for? Said Winston. Who you think is behind you? Lossom stopped and stood frozen on the spot. Will you two shut up with your foolishness? Whispered Blossom. What you whispering for? No one can hear us in here, said Winston. No one can hear us, I thought to myself. I moved close to Blossom. This house was creepy. I don't know how I came in here before by myself. It was nothing like the old shack I played in back in Linston, because there was windows on either side of the shack and you could see easily. There was also the noise of the water moving in the pool, the sound of woodpeckers banging away at trees, crickets chirping, frogs jumping and croaking, all kinds of noises. But this silent house made me very scared. If no one could hear us, who would come to help if we fell in a hole and bawled out for help? Look, said Blossom, over there, that piece of wood that I thought was a leg. Me did tell you it was no leg, said Blossom. Stop lying. You never tell me anything. Blossom then turned quickly and pointed to the corner of the room. Well, that is a leg over there. Looking where Blossom pointed, I saw the leg sticking out from behind a wooden box. Something was very wrong with this house and I wanted to leave, but there was no way I was leaving on my own. Okay, that's all I'm gonna read for now. And um, you can find details of where you to purchase the book and also you can check out that on Writing on the Walls website, which will give you full information. Thank you.